So that's the low voltage diode allowing the 12 volts to pass across here as well for here. Um, so now you see how a second coil can pass low voltage through it, right? And then in blue, we're going to draw the uh, high voltage path outwards, which would be here, like so. Okay, so now these two coils are isolated before the diodes, combined after the diode, which makes no difference because they're still isolated by the diodes. And their flyback goes out this direction. Okay. Um, and and that's where you add the flyback diode. I'll show you right now. Right here. Two of them. Oops. Yeah, two of them. Right here. One diode, other diode. And these two are high voltage. Um, those are your high voltage diodes. Those are your low voltage diodes. I guess you can use those one in four zero zero one. And there you have it. That's how you can add more than one coil on the same transistor. And just make sure your drive coils, you know, they don't pull more than your transistor can have and can handle combined so if one drive coil has say 30 ohms and you want to add a second one the current will be divided into two paths you know half the current will go through one coil half the current will go through the other I say keeping your inductors at, um, instead of, uh, if you're going to have more than one inductor as a drive coil, like this, and saying, supposing this works, which I don't see why it shouldn't. The low voltage diodes down here, they isolate their inductors flyback, keeping the flyback from hitting the other coil, forcing it to go out to the battery. So you can easily add multiple inductors like this just by adding a low voltage diode to each one here and the high voltage diode gets placed like so before the low voltage diode. That's important. So coil 1 is 30 ohms and coil 2 is 30 ohms and you're passing 50 milliamps total. That's what you uh, that's what the two coils combined allow through them, meaning each coil can handle 25 milliamps. Then that's how you know. So these coils, they can be, you know, uh, 30 ohms each. You know, just you just put them in parallel. You know, you're gonna you you're still gonna pass the 12 volts through them because they're all gonna be 30 ohms. And if you had 60 ohms. You know, you might need more than 12 volts to get through there. But if you have multiple 30 ohm coils in parallel, the 12 volts going to go through there. It's not going to get divided. The voltage is not going to get divided. What's going to get divided is the current. So if a 30 ohm coil passes 12 volts and let's say 100 milliamps, and you add another 30 ohm coil to that circuit like so, then you're going to pass 50 milliamps through each coil. And so, you know, maybe five or six or seven of these. And if you divide 100 milliamps divided by five, 
You put five coils in this circuit like so, each coil will get 20 milliamps. Now this is an experiment, you know. I don't think you need a lot of milliamps to generate this, uh, this flyback effect. So yeah, that's just my demonstration of this way of adding multiple coils or a second coil to the standard Bedini circuit. Let me save this image. So let me open the other one. I'll show you the original Bedini circuit without these edits. That's right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. That's the original circuit. No edits. And you can see how it is. And I'm I'm just, you know, modifying it to look like so. Okay, those are the two circuits. So you take this diode out here and you move it before the, the low voltage diodes. <clears throat> All right. Hope this makes sense uh, over and out.